Okay, so we're just going to bring them out rapidly now, one after another. Mark Palatucci is the keeper, handler, creator of Cosmo. Come on up here, Mark. For those of you who are reading the book, page 37. Hello. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you. I'm really excited to tell you about the work that we're doing in home robotics and artificial intelligence. And to share with you a path that we see to mass adoption of robots in the home. So you might ask, why do we even want robots in the home to begin with? And we very much believe that AI and robotics is not something that's just for business or governments. We've talked about military applications. Um, but really, we believe that robots and homes can have an impact on everyday people's lives to ultimately make um, lives easier and potentially a little bit more fun. And we'll show you, uh, show you the work that we're doing in that, in that regard in a minute. So it's really this vision, vision that excites us at Anki. It's like, how do we take um, all of these incredible technologies, all this incredible science, and refine it into a form that can affect millions of lives around the world? <clears throat> so we just heard a bit about this war going on with uh, virtual assistants, and it seems like every big tech company these days has their own version of some type of AI assistant. Um, but as we've heard, we're really just barely scratching the surface here. These assistants have very little personality, there's no character, they're stuck in these static platforms, they can't um, move about an environment or manipulate an environment. And when we think about the future of where this technology can go, you heard the Google duplex demo. Um, but in many cases, we have this fear. Uh, we have a fear of technology. We have a fear of robotics or AI. A lot of this fear actually comes from science fiction, uh, movies, films, books. And a lot of times, it comes from potentially very prominent people who don't necessarily understand the tech or the math or really what the constraints are. And you know they get people riled up. So, we asked a different question. We asked, how do we build a different future of robotics? How do we build a friendly future of robotics? And it's really that this journey that we set out on uh, seven years ago. And we introduced, just last year, a character called Cosmo. Cosmo is the first truly smart, interactive, emotive character for the home. And Cosmo can play games with your kids, he can entertain your pets, and it's also an incredibly powerful robotics platform that we now have over 10,000 developers building sophisticated robotics and AI applications of their own. Cosmo has also become probably the leading robot used in STEM education, and we've got schools and universities all over the world that are now using this robotics platform to teach kids really as young as five and six years old how to build um, their own pretty sophisticated uh, robotic applications. And we very much believe that the company that's going to be successful um, in building this robotic future is not only going to understand the IQ and all the really hard technical pieces, all the deep learning, um, but really understand the EQ, the emotional side of robotics, and how by using emotion appropriately, we can create robots that are much more usable and accessible to large groups of people. When we started working on Cosmo, this was literally our first prototype. Um, very basic, it's just a webcam on a box of staples. And, uh, and since then, you know, we've grown from uh, a few PhD students and a kitchen table prototype to now a company of over 200 people that shipped millions of robots around the world. And Cosmo, very happy to say, was, uh, despite being a very powerful robot, was the number one best-selling toy uh, on Amazon uh, here in Canada, as well as the US, and UK, and France. Uh, if you haven't seen Cosmo, let me just show you a, a short little clip. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some audio here, uh, just to give you a sense of his personality. Yeah. 
So when we set out to build a character, really the goal for us was to imagine the kind of character that you would see from feature film, from your favorite, say, animated movie. And we're trying to think about what were the pillars to bring a character with that richness of emotion and, and that type of depth, how do we bring that character to life? And we, really, we realized that there were really four pillars uh, to this. And if you look at the left side of this chart, these are the items that are focused on the IQ, the intelligence, right, the brain. So everything from computer vision, object recognition, um, motion estimation, so how does the robot know where it is potentially in the environment, as well as all of the AI bits. So how do you interpret the world? How do you um, potentially plan a path from point A to point B if there are a bunch of obstacles in your way? So if you know where you are and what you want to do, what is the optimal sequence of actions, if you will, um, for this robot to achieve its goal. And on the right side of this chart, these are really the elements that are focused on the EQ and the emotional side. So high fidelity joints and animatronics, right? We want this robot to be very, very expressive. A display, high resolution display is incredibly important. A huge amount of motion comes from facial expressions. And if we show those facial expressions um, in a really clear way, uh, it can have a huge impact. Obviously, all the, if you want to give this robot a voice or if you want it to emote with different types of sound effects that the way that you might have seen in, uh, say, a movie like Star Wars. And another big component is content. So what are the different games? What are the different activities that you can do with this robot? And probably most importantly is animation. Now, we approached animation and character from a very, on a, from a very different angle. And we kind of had this epiphany that who are the people that really understand character? It's not the robot scientists or the mechanical engineers. It's not um, you know, our AI, our AI team. But it's really people that have spent their entire lives, their entire careers in film, in animation, who live and breathe character, character development, who live and breathe storytelling. And so what we ended up doing is building this incredibly diverse team of, we went out, we hired animators from Pixar, we hired people from DreamWorks, and we paired them up with some of the best uh, roboticists and artificial intelligence people to really create um, a character that I think is unparalleled in, in terms of its emotional depth. And we took a lot of the best practices from film and applied that to the way that we did character development. So we thought about, just very early on, what are, the, what are the goals that we have for this character? And in this case, we really wanted to think hard about the type of relationship, the type of companionship that you would get from a pet that you might have in the home. What are the things that makes your favorite toy your favorite toy? Um, how do we bake those into the product? And how do we take a lot of the mystery and wonder that you might see from science fiction, and how do we bake that into the product so there's a lot of magic and that you don't necessarily know exactly how everything works. And we also bor borrowed a lot of the process that you might see if you walk around the headquarters at Pixar. You'll see storyboards all over the place. And that's exactly what we did here. We took storyboards of, we created storyboards of all these different um, types of interactions that you might have with the robot. So if you come to our office now, these are plastered all over the place. And we think really hard about all the different moments. And we have the additional challenge that these characters are interactive, right? So unlike a feature film where everything is completely linear and planned out from start to finish, uh, we have to think about a robot operating in an interactive environment, an unstructured environment, where really anything can happen. And we want this to feel uh, natural. We put a huge amount of work into the subtle details of all the different facial expressions. We probably did hundreds of different studies just on what the eyes look like. 
Um, and again, you know, matching this up against all the different uh, characteristics that we set out for this character, just to find something that felt quite right. And probably most importantly is we built the world's first pipeline between feature film animation and production tools like Maya and low-level robotic controls. So when our animators sit down, they'll have a fully rigged, constrained virtual model of the robot. They can animate it using these incredibly powerful tools that they're used to using and have been trained literally for years on. But when they hit play or when they hit render, they don't actually see a movie. They actually see the robot on their desk doing that exact movement and that exact behavior. And this will give you uh, a little bit of a sense of how that works. And it's with, that, with those incredibly powerful tools that we can create motion that is extremely lifelike and extremely precise and is able to convey things in a very, very subtle way. So let me just show you a, a few clips here. This is a robot, Cosmo getting stuck on his back. He's struggling to kind of get up. And again, if we want to make characters that are really organic and feel lifelike and natural, then the behavior can't be repetitive. And in this case, we've created what we call alts of the robot trying to express, in each case, the same emotion, but does it in different ways such that it can be unpredictable and we don't know exactly what he's going to do. You'll notice in the first example, the robot actually failed. And this is really a key point, I think, worth mentioning, because what we found is that if, if you build a robot or if you have a machine that is able to express emotion, is able to express frustration about not being able to accomplish something or uh, you know, failing at a task, then we actually are OK with that. We're much more tolerant of that error. We're much more tolerant of our technology failing because we empathize with it. And that's something that, as product designers, is really something very important to keep in mind, um, and in many cases, show you the benefit of adding uh, emotion to our products. And what I'll show you now is just a short clip of how we mix all these elements together, how we take animation tests, storyboarding, um, how we used physical prototypes of the robot to really think through the end-to-end -end experience of the product. Okay, so everything I've showed you so far, um, obviously a huge amount of work leading up to production. But if you want to replicate this potentially millions and millions of times, there's a huge amount of work um, just going into mass production. So I'll take just a few seconds to show you uh, just some of the complexity that goes into doing robotics at million unit scale. 
Um, all the mechanical engineering, there's over 300 parts, gears, drivetrains, um, many, many motors in Cosmo, two million lines of code in this tiny robot, uh, thousands and uh, almost 2,000 animations at this point. Uh, Cosmo also has uh, 40 minutes of original music. And once we get to the factory, there's over 200 assembly steps. So it literally takes a couple hundred people just to assemble uh, a single robot. And Cosmo is really the first in a series of interactive, smart, emotive characters that we hope to build. And what we've been building at Anki over the last many years is the fundamental platform, the robotics platform, to build consumer-grade robotics at scale. So all the different pieces of technology from um, perception, planning, AI, character development, all the mechatronics, mass production, security is a huge component of what we do now. If you're going to welcome a robot into your home, then you need to trust it. You need to un, um, believe that it's uh, trusting your data uh, in a good way. And really, uh, the vision for us is to continue to drive to put robots into people's homes. And I think this year, you're really going to see robots that are um, always on, autonomous, living with us 24-7, that are, have even richer characters than what we've seen so far, and start to combine utility. And some of the things that we've seen from virtual assistants uh, bring that into uh, these physical uh, character platforms. And also doing it at scale and at a mass market price point. So before, even just a year or two ago, this would have cost probably thousands of dollars to put all this type of technology um, into a little robot. Now we can do it for a couple of hundred. So I'm going to leave you with just one last clip just to show you the range of emotions. This is a test that our, our animation team did, and it can really give you a sense of um, how broad of character that we can create. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry, Hi. Mark. Um, Hi. Is, is Cosmo now available commercially? He is. We also have it out in the lobby, and we'll be uh, demoing it if you want to check it out. And is it for sale upstairs? Uh, I doubt I don't know. <laughs> is it for sale in it stores? It is for on sale Amazon? in Canada, yes. Yeah? What's the price point? It's uh, 179 OK. All right. Thanks Thank so you so much. much. Appreciate Can we have it. a picture? Yeah. Sure. Here. <laughs> Thank you.